Table Rock Lake is nestled in the scenic Ozark Mountain region of southwest Missouri and northwest Arkansas. The lake covers more than 60,000 acres and has 742 miles of shoreline. Hello, I'm Colonel Courtney Paul, commander of the Little Rock District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. We've reached the final master plan stage for Table Rock Lake. I want to thank all of you who participated in the public review last August. Since the close of the review period, our team considered all of your comments. With your input and the Corps' resource management goals and objectives, the project delivery team selected a hybrid of Alternative 2D, which does not have a vegetation management area. We also made minor modifications to the amount of land in the high and low density land classifications. This hybrid alternative is now our selected alternative for the final master plan and environmental assessment. This revised master plan now supersedes the 1976 master plan. Let's review the changes and what makes up the selected alternative. There will not be any vegetative management area land classification on Table Rock Lake. In the August 2013 draft master plan, the preferred alternative proposed that a 50 linear foot vegetative management area be classified along the entire shoreline from the 915 mean sea level mark. This classification only affected federal lands adjacent to low density, environmentally sensitive, and wildlife management areas. The exception was existing resort lease areas in the low density classification. The objective of the vegetative management area was for adjacent landowners and the Corps to come to an understanding of how best to manage federal lands adjacent to the lake. The hope was to ensure future generations would be able to appreciate the natural resources of the lake just as many generations have done in the past. Measures such as selective tree limbing, grass and shrub pruning, non-native species removal and replanting of native species were actions that could have been done in this area under this alternative. In response to the overwhelming majority of public comments against this classification, the Corps will not implement a vegetative management area land classification in this master plan revision. We still believe the intent of this classification remains valid and encourage further development of this concept in cooperation with other agencies and the public. The only changes to high density land classifications will take place within the existing lease areas or limited development areas of the destination resorts and or resorts that are not already classified as high density. The proposal to convert some high density lands to low density because those lands no longer function as high density will proceed under the selected alternative. During the public review period, numerous comments stated that most people were content with the level of development around the lake. No new additional high density land classification was necessary. We were charged with maintaining the current facilities and recreational opportunities on the lake. A complete list of these changes is in Chapter 5 of the Final Master Plan. Maps can be found in Appendix D. Land classification changes proposed for environmentally sensitive areas, low density, wildlife management areas, project operations, and the water surface classifications remain similar to the proposals under the original Alternative 2. Using the methodology described in Chapter 5 for determining the environmentally sensitive area land classification, there were some areas around the lake that were once classified as low density under the 1976 master plan. But, under the revised master plan, we would convert to environmentally sensitive areas. During the public review process of the draft master plan, some portions of these environmentally sensitive areas were identified for ongoing or future development by the public and adjacent landowners. Subsequently, the project delivery team took this under consideration during the formulation of the final master plan. To reach a compromise, we allowed for smaller parcels of land to remain as low density rather than convert entirely to environmentally sensitive areas. As we bring this process to a close, we thank you for your involvement. Whether you submitted a comment, attended a workshop, or participated in a focus group, we heard your voice. The passion and enthusiasm of everyone involved during this process emphasized how crucial it is to keep the balance between all the competing interests surrounding the lake. It is important to know that this is not the end. The master plan is considered a living document 
and if change is warranted, avenues are available for change. At the beginning of January, we lifted the Shoreline Moratorium and the project office began accepting permit applications. Although budget constraints will limit the Corps' capacity to process requests, these will continue. Because of the lack of funding, we do not know when the Shoreline Management Plan update will take place. Once the update begins, we will notify you and a similar public outreach process will take place. You will have the same opportunity to participate in this process as you did with the Master Plan. Again, thank you for your participation. The revised Master Plan and Associated Maps are available for your review on our website.